I'm Polly Bobek III. I'm filling in for the pastor today. And the name of uh, my message is going to be Taking a Trip with Paul from the Cross to Heavenly Places. So we got a lot to cover. So pray that I get my whole message in because I'm real good for staying maybe in one area too long because I get passionate because everything in God's Word is so important. So let's go get, jump right into it. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. I think that's too many times, honey. She tells me to <laughs> repeat the verses three times. Don't you think three is too much, too enough? Three's good. Well, he's one of he's one of our elders here, you know. So, like me, I'm getting older. The memory. So maybe repeating it three times helps me to remember how far to go in the verses. Um, so I'll do it four times. First Corinthians one eighteen nineteen. Uh, this is about the unsaved. Um, First Corinthians one eighteen nineteen. My page got stuck. Go five. <laughs> right? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. See, those who are perishing out there, they're spiritually dead. They're on their way to hell. Yet, they think the preaching of the cross is foolishness. You know, when you tell them, you know you can be saved? Just by trusting Christ Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, he rose. You can be saved by grace, through faith, as a gift of God, not of yourself, as a gift of God, not of works. They think it's foolish. They want to hear some religion. They want to hear, give me something to do. That's the flesh. But it's foolish to them. But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. The cross, you know, you think about it, Christ was crucified in weakness, right? But think of the power and the strength it took for him, for the joy set before him, right? He endured the cross. You know, what strength? Remember how he sweated great drops of blood? When the father showed him that cup that he would drink? And he kept going. You know, and remember that when you feel like quitting. <clears throat> For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Paul's talking about the, the wisdom of this world. You see, the Corinthians were believers that were impressed with worldly philosophy and religion, and they were all into the sign gifts. Paul had explained to them they're going to be passing away. Don't be, you know, don't be all into them because they ain't going to be here no more. And then you're going to have to fake them like they do today. And no disrespect to any of my charismatic uh, brothers and sisters. But go to 2 Timothy 3 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 5. This Bible, it's got real thin pages. Um, this is religion, because fallen man is impressed with, with religion, isn't it? And Paul has to warn us in the body of Christ, having a form of godliness, 
These are men behind the pulpit. What you would call men of the cloth. You know, they call the religious ones. Um, having the form of godliness. Remember uh, Paul writes about um, ministers of righteousness? He's talking about false teachers. They come up and they got, they might have a King James Bible. And they say, Jesus is Lord. Oh, wow. I know they're going to come out with some powerful preaching. But you better listen to the message. You better discern what I'm teaching. How do you know I'm teaching right? Unless you know this word. And that's going to be part of my challenge this morning to you and me. Getting into this word. Because we're going to see some people have been in uh, under grace teaching. Maybe you grew up in it. You know? Or you've been under it for years. But is it affecting you? Is it motivating you? Are you outreaching to loss and, and willing to, to be persecuted and talked about and attacked because Satan hates the great message, grace message, you know that? He hates it. That's what destroyed him. His power, God kept the secret, the, the mystery, right? We'll see that in a minute. And so, one thing I want to say, I'm not, I don't try and do pressure tactics. But part of preaching or teaching is to be used to the Holy Spirit, uh, I'm sure Dave would agree with this, to motivate people into application of the Word of God. And if we're not, if we're not even in the study in this Word, you know what? Your mind is what? Renewed and we're transformed. That's growing, right? Well, if, if we're not into it, what did Paul say? Don't be conformed to this world. If you ain't into the word, you know what? It's, your mind's going to be thinking like the world. Carnal. Look at the Corinthians. Well, we'll see, we'll see in a second. But Paul warns them here in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. These men that it says, it's no wonder Paul says in another place that um, for Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Satan don't come. Now he will work through pornography and different things, maybe on the streets and the gangs and the prostitutes and that. You know, he, his job still kill and destroy. But he does his best work in religion. It sounds good. He used the word, the word of God, but not really divided. He uses it out of context. Didn't he try and use it against Christ? Yeah. But Christ knew it in context. So that's how you don't get sucked into um, Satan's devices. He has methods and devices. And he's been studying man from anywhere. I only believe the human race been around maybe four to 10,000 years. You know, I don't believe in evolution. So he's had, let's say 10,000. He's had 10,000 years to study mankind. You don't think he's pretty good at what he does? Oh, yeah. So if you don't know this word, you're not going to know how to take them thoughts captive that he throws them flaming, doubting darts, uh, lusting darts, uh, self-righteous darts, whatever, you know, his, his flaming darts. And so, he's, back to the verse here. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such draw turn away. So they come across as godly men. And now you got godly women preachers and pastors. Don't get me on that. That's a whole, whole different thing. And they get mad, boy, on Facebook when I post about that, that uh, where, where do we get our commands from? From Paul, right? Okay. He says I, in 1 Corinthians 15, um, 56 or 57, he says, I give you the commands of Christ. So, under grace, Paul says he doesn't allow a woman to be an authority, to be a, a preacher, and turn the TV on. I got a friend. I love her. She loves the Lord. She's Pentecostal. And she's got a lady pastor. So, there was a... Uh, so I've got to watch myself say one more thing on this. A lady that knew how to really divide the word. 
understood the mystery. She was a pastor. And I asked her, you understand Paul's gospel. You understand Paul's instructions. Why are you a pastor? Because there ain't no men. Well, then, you don't do it. You know, anyway, that's another subject. But it's not just knowing about um, what God's Word says. It's applying it, right? You know, people say, well, that was for back then. But now, you know, in our modern times, contemporary times. Oh, really? So, was it just back then that people were sinners? That need to be saved? Now, if it was under the law, yeah, that's back then. We're not under the law, we're under grace. Um, So, he tells us to beware of false teachers. See, they teach the Bible. They teach they might teach the death, burial, and the resurrection. You know, every denomination under quote Christendom, unquote, teaches the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Catholicism does. Right? They teach a trinity. But see, when it comes to salvation, th- and when you hear the messages, if you discern, because you know how to rightly divide the word, you understand grace. You understand how God's work and how you're saved today. You're justified completely as a free gift through Christ's blood. and through his, It's justification on the life. Right? Well, when you hear then, yeah, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose. But... Y- y- and you're saved by grace, but you got to do the works or you ain't saved. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, Calvinism, you got to persevere to the end. Or if you don't persevere to the end, you're not really saved. Arminianism says you got to, you know, you can get unsaved. So you got to watch. You got to know this word. You got to rightly divide it, right? There's a lot of stuff in the Bible. Twelve thirteenths of the Bible is about the nation of Israel and the law, isn't it? It's about God's program with them. Only Paul's epistles deal with us. But be very careful when you're sharing that, that Paul says all Scripture is God-breathed. Right? It's inspired. All. We study it all. I study from Genesis. I'm like where am I? in Psalms right now. Every year... I don't just, I don't even count. Like, I'm, I got I to gotta get it done within a year. I might read it twice in a year. I don't know. Some days I'll study six hours. Some days I study one hour. Some days you're in a hurry. You got half an hour. Some days I got to run out. And I love studying in the morning because my mind's fresh. But sometimes you got to go do something, right? So what I've learned to do is then study it later, even though I'm more tired. But study it. <laughs> don't just read it. Study it, rightly divide it, meditate on it, and then what? Apply it. Um, <clears throat> go to first, back to First Corinthians two two. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You want well. See, I don't do this every week, so it's like that song, uh, you got, oh, I got to help me at the end. <laughs> First Corinthians 2.2. 2. Now, Paul is writing to these carnal Corinthians, okay? You ever read the book of Corinthians, 1st, 2nd Corinthians? You know what type of church they were, or church is. Um, Paul says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. All Paul could get across to them was Christ died for our sins. He couldn't get on to the mystery because they weren't ready for it. And that's the same today. When, with, with unsaved people, don't try and explain to them all the things of right division and the mystery. Their eyeballs are going to go like this. You know, or even somebody like my, uh, my nephew's wife came a uh, couple few weeks ago and uh, 
I asked her, how did you like it? And, and she has a lot of medication, so, and she goes, it was kind of hard to understand, you know. Um, and he wasn't really getting deep into it, but she ain't been under uh, grace teaching and the word rightly divided. So we got to be patient with people, you know, because God's like that with us. And what I want to say is growth, God takes his time. We're never there. Like Paul said, I'm, not that I'm perfected, but I forget the past and I press on, right? Um, so God is going to be working, taking his time with us, gentle. You know, he's not going to get you when you mess up. Because every day we come up short, right? But growth is something that happens. Sometimes you don't even know. And all you, you think about it and you go, man, God's really must have been working in my heart in my life in this area because I'm growing. But that comes through the Word of God, having your mind renewed. But on the other hand, God, what He began in us, He's going to complete, right? It's God who works in you both to will and to do according to His good pleasure. So He doesn't overrule our will. He works within our will and to what? Do according to his good pleasure. So that means, I love this. As I, you know, sometimes you're studying and some just, Holy Spirit illumines your mind. God takes pleasure in working in you. What do we think? He's disgusted. He's got to be aggravated with me. I've been a grace believer this long and I still got a problem here or whatever. No, God takes pleasure and working in us. I love it. Like they did that message that time uh, about, you know, when God looks at us, he sees Christ. I think it was in uh, Corinthians, we smell like Christ with the aroma. <laughs> you know, when we pray, because the Holy Spirit intercedes in our prayers, we sound like Christ. And I don't remember everything else, but... Uh, I get blessed by Dave's ministry, and uh, uh, I know everybody here appreciates it. I'm so glad he's back. I would like to finish up my uh, series, but maybe another time. But I'm really glad that uh, Dave is back because uh, he's really edifying, you know, and uh, we're all blessed to have him. And you should let people know that you appreciate them because Satan sure will uh, attack you. You know, he attacks pastors' minds saying, look at the people. How long you been teaching? What kind of pastor are you? You still got people in this. Satan will make sure when you talk about the pastor that it gets back to him. A lot of pastors get discouraged and quit. Praise God. How long has our pastor been? Man, he's put up with us for a long time. And I ain't been there that long. Well, a few years, but praise God for him. Doesn't mean you can't disagree with them now, but we should appreciate them. So, oh man. 1 Corinthians 2 2. Okay. Um, so, all Paul could give them, he couldn't give them meat. He could only feed them with milk. Uh, anybody on Facebook, I don't know if you ever see when me and Mary went a Quite a few times out to Springfield when I didn't have a pastor, I would cover for, for Ken, their pastor. And uh, <laughs> I love family-oriented churches. You know? Somebody left the baby's bottle right here. You know, it's a big pulpit kind of. And so I, I, people ask, well, why is that bottle there? I go, well, that's for the babies that I got to, you know, feed them milk. You know? um, but sometimes it's like that. If we're not into the Word, if... And it's just not reading it. It's just not studying it. It's just not really dividing it. It's desiring to apply it. It's praying in them areas. God, I thank you that where you began in me, you're going to finish. You know, I want to grow. Do you want to grow? If you don't, you know, like the Corinthians here, they were like retarded Christians. It's sad when you see a retarded child or adult. Uh, that ain't their fault, but but to me, what's even and they're wonderful. They're usually real loving because they ain't all focused on themselves. They, you know, they hug you, and you know, we can learn a lot from them. Uh, but 
what's sadder is when you have a retarded Christian, the growth is retarded. They still need milk. You know? Um, I, I'm going to catch you all on some later on. Um, let me enjoy my, my, my humor. <laughs> You'll see what I'm saying later. I'll tell you when. I'm, I don't have the jokes like the past. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, this is about those who are saved, but immature and carnal. They were impressed with human philosophy, religion, and outward sign gifts. See, look at me. I sound like the high. I used to be a Pentecostal eight, six, eight years. You know, get people shaken, and uh, you know where Paul had even said when it was in vogue before the Word of God was completed, you still had the sign gifts going on. And uh, I remember at the end of the thing. The music would get pumping, boy, work up that flesh. And then uh, the drummer, I remember, because they're the one who, I know somebody actually who was taught, you work them up, you motivate them, you work them into a frenzy. Yeah, that stuff goes on. And so afterwards, they're all speaking in tongues. What did Paul say? No more than two or three. And then you need, you got an interpreter, right? <clears throat> I think the modern church today, because they're seeking signs and wonders out there, you know, they want to experience something. They're the most like the Corinthian church, I think, than there's ever been. The things that, and you know what? It's the early, early church's fault. Because what did they teach? The body of Christ began in Acts 2 on Pentecost, right? So, when people started taking that real serious, now back then, they didn't, you know, I'm listening to Pastor O'Hare when Pentecostalism actually was really coming on strong. And he, he had to battle with it. But the Baptists couldn't, um, couldn't tell them they were, they were wrong because they believed in water baptism. And Peter said, what, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, not as a testimony. That's to the nation Israel, right? And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, you had Pentecostal coming, coming on the scene because why? Acts 2 was taught on Pentecost, beginning of the body of Christ. That's the biggest blunder of the church, as Pastor O'Hare used to say. The church didn't begin at Pentecost. It began with Paul. Paul said, I was saved as a pattern for those who would believe after. The body of Christ began when Christ saved his worst enemy and gave him a new commission, a new gospel. No longer get baptized for the remission of your sins and you receive the Holy Spirit. It's just saved by grace through faith, not by works, no baptism, no uh, uh Whatever your law, no nothing. You're saved by grace through faith. Right? It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works. That's the gospel today. And what I see, because I do a lot of studying on apologetics, and um, you see stuff on Facebook, and I do a lot of reading, because I want to know what's going on so I know how to minister to people and them things. And, out of, and I love my Pentecostal friends and charismatic, um, but I also see some of the things they're sharing. I used to, because I was taught it until I learned how to really divide the Word. And I learned to go to this Word of God and test everything, hold on to that which is good, and then throw the rest out. You know? And out of Pentecostalism has come all kinds of crazy stuff. You had that counterfeit revival a few years ago in uh, Toronto and then Brownsville where uh, they're supposedly laughing in spirit, drunk in the spirit. Rodney Howard Brown, the Holy Ghost bartender. Dude was going, this other guy, we're smoking the Holy Spirit. I mean, they're crazy. They're clucking like chickens, barking like dogs. You don't think it's important to rightly divide this word? 
Because if you don't, you'll be suckered into that stuff. And now you've got a new movement, the new apostolic, apostolic reformation now, that said God is bringing back uh, the office of prophet and apostles. And they give you new revelation. You see, error begets error. I, you know, I'm doing a little study on the origins of the grace movement. And a uh, really good study. And the men who really got persecuted for, for you know, standing for Paul's gospel, for teaching how to rightly divide the word, teaching the mystery, teaching the church didn't start at Pentecost, they got called names. See, when, they, when someone attacks you for you teaching right division, you teaching eternal security, all these things, that whole body of truth, justification by faith, that body of truth in the mystery that was given to Paul that was hid in time past, you're going to get attacked. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to call you names. They're going to try and shame you. Satan, they're not our enemies. Satan is our enemy. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Sometime, uh, even in the, in the church, Someone doesn't even know. Maybe Satan did something and it uh, bothered you. But if we don't apply forgiveness and love, then, you know, like the Galatians, you think about them, Paul said, watch lest you devour one another. Satan hates the mystery. He tries to destroy grace churches. And I've seen them go down. And what I want to say too, young people, because, you know, a lot of times you think, Oh, yeah, well, the adults. No, you're supposed to pick up the torch. And you're supposed to run with it. Because we're getting older. I know I, know I don't look like it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sure. Um, but you've got to pick it up. Amen. Because if not, we could go into the dark ages again. Paul said, all those in Asia had deserted me, even during his lifetime. They were, what were they deserting? Not, they weren't saying we're going to go to some other religion. or uh, They were still preaching Christ, but they were not preaching them according to the revelation and the mystery. Hidden time passed. They started mixing the kingdom program with the grace program, the mystery program. And you can't mix oil and water. They don't mix they're mixing law with grace. So pray, not just young people. God, give us boldness to share this message. So what if they talk about us? We need to have some guts and backbone, no? So I love about older people. Like uh, I always, uh, James and uh, um, Jenny, Genoa. Love Genoa, man. James would be, he'd go to McDonald's with these dudes, he'd tell me, these Baptists and, you know, different. And he's sharing out of Riley Divide and Paul's Gospel. He'd tell him, you wrong, brother. You wrong. I loved it. And then uh, Genoa would call pastors, like we're in faith pastors, the prosperity pimps on TV. Why are you teaching that stuff? You know that ain't right. And she's an older lady. She gets away with it. You know, if I did it, the guy probably say, hey, meet me outside. Yeah, and uh, but all of us have to stand for the gospel and let Paul. He's our uh, pattern, right? Think what he went through. But he wanted to finish his courts with joy. That's what I want. I want on my uh, what's a stone put on gray stone. I want it saying he finished his course with joy. Don't quit. So what if people attack you? Just remember it's not them. Love them anyway. Forgive them. Sometimes, you know, some people you just got to cut out of your life. I, I love Facebook because you can just block somebody. <laughs> Can't do it sometimes like people you work with and stuff. Uh, but if some people are so messing in your life, sometimes you have to just... Say, I'm going to love you from a distance. 
but don't use that as an excuse to cut everybody off that uh, you know did something. Otherwise, Mary would have to leave me. <laughs> you know, I come up short every day. <clears throat> Slacking up. I'm glad to see I'm into the word. Um, so. Go to 3.12, 1 Corinthians 3.12, a couple chapters away. 1 Corinthians 3.12. Wait a minute. I think I got the wrong verse. I'll probably come across it again. Um, But he talked about how to the mature he was able to take and share with them the mystery. We'll get to that in a sec, I think. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 8. Or first, keep your finger there, go to Colossians 2, 6 to 8, and then 10. Colossians chapter 2. 6 to 8, and then verse 10. Colossians 2, 6 to 8, verse 10. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus as Lord, so ye walk in him. How did you receive Christ Jesus as Lord? How did you get saved? You depended on his finished work, didn't you? How do you live the Christian life? Dependent on Christ in you to live out of you. Because there's one thing to challenge people to apply things so you can, you can grow. But it's one thing also to remind them you can't live the Christian life in your own strength and your own resources. You have to depend on Christ in you by his Holy Spirit to produce fruit out of you. There's like a balance there. You know, because it's not like we don't do anything. We get, God doesn't pick up you know, remember the, uh, my favorite Martian? you will go like this, mm, put some in somebody's hands. Or, you know, um, no, it's not like that. God doesn't put the Bible in your hands. We got to pick it up. We got to open it up. We got to make that time. You got to make a choice. Say, I'm tired. You watch TV? Go on Facebook? When you're tired? Wouldn't it be more uh, spiritually healthy? Nothing wrong with going on Facebook and minister on our lot. But wouldn't it be more spiritually healthy to get into words? Some. And the more you get into it, the more you want to get into it. Because you get, your inner man gets hungry. You start growing and then you want to grow some more. That's grace. Grace is motivated by grace by appreciation, by love. I want to know God more, and the only way you're going to know him is through this word, rightly divided. I want to know who I am, who Christ has made me. Got to go to Paul's epistles, find out. Because if you don't see yourself the way God sees you, you're not going to walk consistent with that. Don't you think? Don't that make sense? If you don't know that you're totally justified, totally righteous, God made him to be knows who? Christ. To be sin for us. A sin substitute, right? He took our place. So why? That we might become the righteousness of God in him. If you don't study the word and be reminded of that, you are the righteous if you're a believer. If not, you're totally unrighteous. Your, your righteousness is as filthy rags to God. But that could change this day. Believe Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again. Don't come with works. Come just through faith. If you know your inner man is totally righteous, you're a new creation in Christ. Your inner person only wants to serve God. It doesn't want to sin. It wants to bring God's glory. But we got no nature. That's why you better uh, be careful who you're listening to. Because there's grace, supposedly, 
um, teachers that teach you don't have a sin nature no more. Because in Romans chapter 6, where it says, the old man's been destroyed. Well, yeah, you died who you were in Adam. That's, that's destroyed, but the sin nature is still there. What I want to do, I don't do. What I don't want to do, you know, I always tell people when they go, oh, you just can't sin when you're on the grace. What I want to do, Paul didn't seem to think that. All right? So, as you have received uh, Colossians 2, 6 through 8, then verse 10. As you have re- therefore received Jesus as Lord, the Lord, so walk in him. Conduct your life in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. One word should make you think of another place. What establishes you or establishes you? Paul's Gospel, Romans 16.25. Paul wrote that he, so Christ, would establish them. That means gives them a a balanced, sound, um, uh, spiritual walk. A powerful, balanced, spiritual walk. One where you don't get, you don't quit because it gets tough. It's Paul's gospel and the preaching in Jesus Christ according to the revelation and the mystery. Why do you think there's so much carnality in the church? Because they ain't teaching. They're preaching Christ according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John when he's teaching Israel under law. We can learn some things from there, but he ain't teaching us. He, we can learn some principles. Like when Christ says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Now, who's he talking to? His disciples. But there's a principle there. He said, as you abide in me and I in you, much fruit will be produced. Isn't that the same principle in the grace? As we depend on Christ, he lives comfortable in us and the Holy Spirit produces fruit. But you better watch because a couple verses after that it talks about if no fruit's being produced, <laughs> throw the branch in the fire. See, so we learn from them things. We learn of things about Christ, his compassion, what he went through, his humanity, his deity. But don't try and follow them instructions, and that's where most churches are in today. Or early acts. Let's get it popping. Find out your identity in Paul's epistles. And he says, rooted and built up in in verse 7, and established in the faith. What's the faith? What Paul teaches us, a body of truth called the mystery. All that truth that that includes about the body of Christ. As you have been taught, now listen to this, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Have you been thankful this week or you've been complaining? I mean, don't tell me out loud. Just think about it. Have you been more thankful or have you been whining and complaining? God don't like whining. God don't like uh, when we're fearing, anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. Yeah, but you don't know what I'm going to. <laughs> you know, I'm different than other Christians. Paul says, the Holy Spirit through Paul. Holy Spirit of God says, be anxious for nothing. Well, what do I do, God? You know, my, you know what I'm going through? You know what I'm facing? You know what I'm struggling with? But by prayer... Get your focus on God. Get it off the situation. We can learn from Peter. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. That's principles. And what happens? With thanksgiving. How can I thank you, God, in this? Because I'm working all things for your good. I'm taking that that would destroy an unsafe person. I'm working it for your good. When I was in the hospital and all that pain, I didn't sit there crying. But I had to apply what I learned. I was thanking God. Use us to glorify Christ. Let them see the reality of Christ in me, Father. You know, I prayed for healing. You know, when I first came out of coma, I said, I know you can heal me, God, but I know you ain't promised me. Except at the rapture. I'm, I'm going to be healed then, for sure. But I go, I want your will to be done. I'd appreciate it if you heal me. <laughs> I don't like pain. I don't know about you, but uh, I said, use it for 
people to see the reality of Christ resurrected. See, no matter what you're going through, you can whine, you can complain, you can get that depressed because you're not applying this word. And all of us can do it. Satan's attacking you. The world is a depressing place. Turn on the news. Six o'clock news, right? <clears throat> Stay thankful. This is God's will. That Rejoice. Again, rejoice, right? God wants us rejoicing. Don't you like rejoicing? I do. <laughs> I don't like being depressed. <laughs> I don't like being angry and frustrated. I like rejoicing. And you know, when you're praising God and you're thinking how good he is and all he's blessed you with, you got food, you got candy sometimes, you got some cake or ice cream from grandma. A lot to be thankful for. Thankful for grandma. Thankful for the parents you had. They weren't perfect. But you sure wouldn't be here if they weren't here. Right? <clears throat> But beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That's human philosophy. Paul got nothing against knowledge. But it's fallen human knowledge that he corrects the Corinthians on because they were impressed by it. And that's what's coming into the church. A bunch of psycho babble comes into the church. Where does that come from? Fallen man's ideas, how to help fallen man. And I'm, I believe they're trying to help them. But this word of God has answers. It, what's it say? All scriptures God breathed useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. That what the, uh, the man, that's uh, that man and woman, that's uh, generic, might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This, I went through a bad depression where I just wanted to die years ago. And I, you know what freed me? My uncle told me, you know, now, one thing, uh, we had never really had our conversation, but um, I never tell people, stop taking your medication. That's not my judgment call. We're all adults. You need to do what you got to do. But I know my uncle told me, he says, you want me to take, I, I wouldn't talk to people. I want to go in the basement and hide I felt like I was in a dark black pit. And I thought from doing drugs that my mind was shot, so I'm never coming out of it. There was no hope. And all I could think about continually is I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. And I said, God, if you don't do something, I'm going to kill myself because I can't take this. And my uncle asked me, you want, Paul, you want me to take you to my doctor and he'll give you a pill? And I'm thinking, how's that doctor going to understand my problem? See, my problem was I was under legalism. And legalism beat me down, and I thought God was disgusted with me. I didn't understand grace. But when I started understanding grace, guess what happened? I started learning to apply Philippians 4, 4 to 8. And when I start getting down, I say, I know why I'm getting depressed. Because I'm not being thankful, Father. I'm letting my mind dwell on my problems and my emotions respond to my thoughts. That's how God designed us. If I'm thinking sad thoughts, I'm going to feel sad. If I'm thinking angry thoughts, I'm going to be angry. If I'm thinking happy thoughts, I'm going to be happy. If I'm thinking thankful thoughts, I'm going to have joy and I'm going to have peace. Because when we apply this word of God, what, what does Philippians 4, 4 to 8 say at the end? And the peace of God that passes all understanding will protect your mind, your thoughts, and your heart. <clears throat> this equips you, this word. Don't wait until you're going through something to, um, oh, let me get the word out. You know, Chuck Swindoll, I don't like mentioning certain people's names on the positive side, because uh, I've heard him say out of one side of his mouth, Oh, we're forgiven. The other side, oh, but we got to get forgiven. You're confusing me, Chuck. But he says some good things at times. Um, he said, you don't wait. You know, if you know a storm's coming, you don't wait if you got, you're getting on your boat till the storm's there, and now you're trying to get your stuff on the boat. 
<laughs> Bill, you missed it. My short legs. Um, you don't wait, right? You, you get equipped and ready for the storm before you, the storm comes. You get into this word. You know this word. You've learned to apply it. You're growing in this word. Then when the real storm hits, bam, it doesn't blow you to and fro with every wind of doctrine where you're running here and there for some help. Paul warns us about, um, beware, in verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, that's human philosophy, and vain deceit after the tradition of men. What is that? Religion. Excuse me. After the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. We'll go to 9 and 10. In Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is head of all principality and power. You are complete in Christ. You lack nothing. You have the word of God that, that will help you to live life a full... What did Jesus say? I came to give you life and life to the full, right? Isn't that true for us too? See that principle? Now the prosperity teachers like saying, uh, I came to give you life, and I forget the translation they like using on that, but uh, the idea is, and make you rich, prosper. You know there's rich people that don't live full lives? They end up in mental institutions, alcoholics, drug addicts, suicide. No, it's that inner, we're spiritually rich. When you read Paul's epistles, especially read, study Ephesians real deep. And man, Paul talks about the riches of the truth. God's riches. God's a giver. He shared his riches with us. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Man, you've got a lot to be thankful for. That's why I was going through that series on um, our spiritual blessings. So, you know, sometimes just knowing a little bit about something but knowing a lot about it, what they are, now you start rejoicing. And now, I don't know about you, but when I understand what God has did for me in a specific area, then I want to thank him for that. Don't you like it when you do something really nice? How about with your kids? I can't stand kids that are spoiled. You know, my sister went to her sister-in-law's who... Raised her two kids by herself, and uh, she always worked. She worked her way out of the ghetto. I give her credit for that, but she wasn't there for her kids. She always bought them things. Here's some money. Well, they kind of, uh, they grew up, got into drugs and, you know, whatever. It was real sad, but uh, my sister stayed home. She was a, a stay-at-home mom the most important job in the world you can have. More important than the presidency. And they went there for Christmas while kids were younger. And they opened up their Christmas gift they gave them. They didn't have much. And then, like this. Get the big one. I said, man, that was the last Christmas gift they would ever got from me. They didn't say thank you. How many times are we like that with God? All oh, he's blessed us with. And we're whining and we're complaining. But you know, if we get convicted on something, what should that do? Cause us to want to change that, right? Start getting more thankful. Having that attitude of gratitude. And that's why we serve God, right? An attitude of gratitude. Not... To be accepted, it's because we are accepted. And to be loved, right? Um, Alright, go to 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. This is what I'm telling you why Satan hates the mystery, hates when people share the word rightly divided. Paul's gospel, that whole body of truth called the mystery because it just destroyed Satan's power. Mm. 
in verse 6. Now remember with the Corinthians, he says, um, I think it's in the next chapter, but I'm not going to go there. All he could give them was milk. They should have had meat. And, you know, in Hebrews, it talk, talks about how uh, by this time they should be on, on solid meat, but they're still bottle fed. Sometimes people in grace churches are like that. We should be able to digest solid meat, but we still need to be bottle fed. We only want to hear the good stuff. We don't want to hear, yeah, we're going to suffer for sharing uh, the gospel of grace. We don't like that, right? I mean, nobody likes suffering. But as you grow and mature, what would Paul say? I rejoice in my tribulations. <laughs> my first read that, he says, what are you, nuts, Paul? <laughs> you know? Because he learned something. They built character, right? That backbone. It's the power of Christ we learn. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection because he'll keep you going. He says, Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That idea in the Greek is uh, matured. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. What's that? That sacred secret that Christ revealed to Paul from heaven, right? For the body of Christ. Even the hidden wisdom which God foreordained, God had this plan be before the world under our glory. That mystery truth is, was hid before the world. It wasn't revealed from Genesis all the way until Paul got saved. And then it, Paul said he was the due time testifier. I like that, the due time testifier. When it was due time, Christ revealed it to him. We live in the best age, ever, I think, Except maybe when we get to heaven. We have the full knowledge of the mystery. You know? And you are blessed because you come to a church. This ain't the only church because you know, you got to watch. Oh, only my church got it. That's cultic sounding. There's other churches that got it, but the majority don't. That you come to a church that teaches that mystery truth because it ain't a secret no more, it's been revealed. Yet Paul still, the name of it is the mystery. It's been revealed, and you can know it, and you can grow in it if we want to. But we speak in verse 7, the wisdom of God and the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes... Now, he's, he's not talking about, I don't believe, actually, I could go to another verse, but... Um, if we get to it. Um, it says that Christ, it's talking about his resurrection, and he ascended into heaven high above all principalities, powers. You know, that's what these princes are, I believe. Princes, prince of darkness, that's Satan. And you have different governmental authorities in the, uh, the second heaven, if you want. Satan's the what? Prince of the power of the air. Right? Um, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So, Satan didn't see it coming, the mystery, did he? That's secret. Because God didn't reveal what he was going to do. He didn't see God was going to form a spiritual organism called the body of Christ that was going to fill places of authority in heavenly places. And that's why, one reason, you want to serve God now. One thing, you just serve him out of gratitude. To me, I'm not up here preaching and te teaching today um, just to get some rewards. But I'm glad when I get there that there's going to be some. That is a motivation to serve. But it shouldn't be the only motivation. Would you invest your life in now? We need to have a heavenly perspective, not an earthly carnal perspective. When you look at life through where you're seated, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? 
You're there. That's our position. We're connected. We die with Christ. We're buried. We rose with Christ, right? We're new creations in Christ. And now we're in union, oneness. Christ is the head. We're the body, many members, right? But only one head. Because He's there, we're united with Him. We're seated with them. Because we're here, he, he can work Him in us, through us. We're His hands, we're His feet, we're His lips. We're His smile. We're His heart to love. Is that meaning a purpose to wake up in the morning? Or, oh, is the Bears game on you? Um, Go to 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 2. <clears throat> now, I was speaking a little bit about my Pentecostals that I loved earlier, but what a lot of teaching has done, a lot of damage in the body of Christ. Though there's some really loving Pentecostals that they got more zeal for the Lord than I see in some grace believers, you know. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, Paul's being sarcastic because angels um, always speak in the language of, uh, you know, when they appear in the Old Testament, they're speaking Hebrew. And have not charity or have not love. The words agape. Um, I am become as a sounding brass, a tinkling cymbal. So what is that? Just obnoxious noise. Now, us as grace believers, we see that, Right? You see somebody, you know, saying, this is being filled with the Spirit. I almost got slayed in the Spirit there. Um, you know, I thought Spirit came to give you life, not to slay you, right? But, and we see that. We know that they're taught that. I was taught that. I used to do that. <laughs> Could you imagine me? When you like to see me back then. Why do you think I got so, such a passion, I think, when I preach? Because uh, maybe my Pentecostal background. So I, God works out things for our good, right? Um, but we'd say, yeah. It's like that uh, two old ladies, I've said this before, in church, and their pastor preaching against uh, fornication. Hey, Amen, he's preaching. That's a Holy Ghost now, right? He starts preaching against lying. Ooh, yeah. He's getting down today. Preach it, Pastor. Right? Then he starts preaching about gossiping. And they said, ooh, he's meddling now. <laughs> well, look at the next verse. Because we would see that amongst, you know, people getting tossed to and fro by everyone in doctrine, chasing signs and wonders, right? But look at the next verse. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries... Yeah, I can understand the mystery. I can understand Paul's gospel. I can understand how to rightly divide the word. We don't water baptize today. We don't pay tithes. We give offerings. But what's he say? And all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so I can remove mountains, have not charity or love, I'm nothing. I'm a big zero. Knowledge puffs up without love. I see a lot of uh, rightly dividers that just argue with people. And they love doing it. They rip them up with the scriptures. They, they know how to wield that sword. But what they're trying to do is destroy them. You know, never look down on somebody unless you're trying to help them up. If we don't have love, then all that knowledge that we learn, because sound Bible doctrine, you know what it should do? Produce love in our lives. What's fruit of the Spirit? Love. And I, th- I believe that's singular. Love and all them other things, love, joy, peace, and all the way down to self-control, like a diamond, it's all little treasures that come out of love. <clears throat> I 
I got one minute. Go to Colossians 1, 3 through 11, and I'll end with this. This is, I'm memorizing the prayer here and then in Ephesians chapter 1. Um, and this is what I pray for our church every day. I pray for you individually and as uh, uh, the church. Colossians 1, 3 through 11. So I'm trying to memorize this. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. I pray every day for you guys. For growth, for things you're going through, because I know we're all going through things. I hope you pray for me. Um, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, listen to this now. First you see faith, right? What's left when Paul says, when tongues and prophecy and knowledge is going to go off the scene and the outward sign gifts. Love, hope, and faith. Look at this. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and love. See, real faith should produce love. Which, which ye have to all the saints. What's the other one here? For the hope, faith, love, and hope. Which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit. See, the gospel of grace should God wants to produce fruit in our life. God wants us to reach out to the lost and then build and edify the saved. As it does also in you since the day we heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. See, that word new is like intimate. It's not just known some facts. I know Jesus died, he was buried, he rose, but did you, hey, you trusted in it? It's a big difference. And new, that's intimately the grace of God in truth. As he learned from Epaphras, so this guy learned from Paul, and he went back and he started building a church up there. Praise God. who is for you a faithful minister in Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. You see that? Love. For this cause, since we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, uh, sometimes people stop right there. Yeah, well, I'm learning this grace stuff. I'm not rightly glad the word. I'm being filled with all this. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. Right? Why? Re- keep reading. That you might walk worthy of the Lord, on the all-pleasing, being fruitful. What's walking worthy? Being fruitful. God wants to put, the Holy Spirit wants to produce fruit in our lives. And every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. See, it's Christ in us. Resurrection power, resurrection life. On the all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. There's that long suffering with joy. Giving thanks. I'm going to close up. Uh, I'm going to leave it right there. Giving thanks unto the Father. Well, let me finish the verse. Um, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet or qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Um, my, my desire today is just to try and encourage, challenge us, one, really to get into the Word, and then apply that Word. Don't just get it up here. Because until grace grasps our heart, we ain't grasped it, as I've said before. Let's pray.